Atlanta, Georgia, the Southeast region, the second round, already advancing along to the Southeast Regional election. The next week, yesterday, were Oklahoma and Virginia. Now two more will join them. Our first game will match South Alabama, a true Cinderella against Michigan, and then UCLA against mighty North Carolina. So, Billy Packer, here in our first game, what can we expect now between the Jaguars of South Alabama and the Wolverines of Michigan? Well, Brent, if you look at these two clubs warm up and you see the physical stature of a Michigan team, it's rather awesome. And then you see a South Alabama club that's had to fill in in regard to the front line, but they do have a great backcourt. Many times in NCAA tournament games, the backcourt dictates the tempo. That's what's going to be necessary in this ballgame. Let's meet the starting lineups now for the Wolverines and the Jaguars. The go-to guy from Michigan, number 41, Glenn Rice, at the top of that column. And Billy has always already pointed out the guard leadership here. Peanut butter and jelly. Billy, which one's peanut butter and which one's jelly well, for the you've, viewers? You've got Lewis as the guy that he sticks to people defensively. He's the peanut butter. Hodge is smooth as jelly. And he is the great all-around offensive, very gifted player. Both can rebound, shoot, run. Uh, a great combination in the backcourt. The key, obviously, will be whether or not South Alabama can handle Michigan's size on the inside. You see how easy it was for the Wolverines to control the tap. Here's Robinson. He's a true standout. The one just gave it up into the corner to the main man, Rice. Stop on Rice. A little odd matchup looking zone out there. It looked like they were playing man, but they matched up a little bit. I imagine Coach Arrow will continue to change his defenses against this experienced Michigan team. Well, he's going up a pretty good guard himself in Ramil Robinson, a guy he tried to recruit to San Jose, San Jacinto when he was down there as a junior college coach. He tried to punch it into Estaba and couldn't get there. Estaba out of Caracas, Venezuela, number 13. You know, it always amazes me at heights listed by various teams. It seems like the power clubs list guys an inch smaller than they are. The smaller schools list guys an inch bigger than they are. Estaba going up against Mills right now will have his hands full. A lot of international experience here, however. Well, here's one of their standouts. That's Jimmy Lewis. That's peanut butter. And he stuck that one, didn't he? Right back is Rice off the iron. Hughes with an offensive putback. things about Estaba. He will dig away, dig away on the inside, lose it on the dribble, on the turnover. Here come the Wolverines. Bust out to Mills. Not exactly. Get bust out. Oh, I was going to say a Mills slow bust out. out. He it was a lumber out. He's taking over, isn't he? Early. Well, we're talking about one of the outstanding Big Ten players of all time in a forward position, Glenn Rice. Very, not only a big scorer, but very accurate shooter, both from inside as well as outside. Three-point range. And Steve Fisher kneeling in the back in a gray suit. Long-time assistant of Bill Freeder, running the Wolverines. That's a story we'll continue to talk about throughout this game. Robinson comes up three-on-one breakout this nice time. Nice pass. Back beautifully to Griffin. See, early on, incredible dominance here in regard to size and power in favor of Michigan. So it's going to have to be a matter of whether or not the Jaguars can spread them out, as they're doing right here. Nice offensive move. Inside and a reach-in foul against Michigan. Number 20, Mike Griffin, his first, team's first. Coach Frieder was in attendance at Michigan's first-round game. He is not here today. And his replacement, Steve Fisher, native of Heron, Illinois. He's 43 years old, and wife and child are in attendance. Yes, he is a candidate. Bo Schimbeckler, the Michigan Athletic Director, is here in attendance. He said his mind is wide open right now, and he was very pleased at how the Wolverines responded to Fisher's leadership in their first-round victory. This is a team noted for its talent that has struggled in the tournament. In each of the last two years, they have been eliminated by North Carolina. If Michigan wins today, and Carolina gets past UCLA, they would beat again. Full court pressure, 1-2-1-1, one, 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 the old UCLA press. Robinson handles it easily. Robinson comes up to the glass and shoots the layup. Billy, this is a very talented team now. Sometimes when a team like South Alabama comes up with a big upset in the first round, it is so much more difficult for them in the second round. For a lot of reasons. Emotionally, they've got to come down off of that big win, and also they're playing against, obviously, much better, bigger, and stronger competition. Now, Errol cannot let this one get out of hand early. 
He must be thinking about that over on the South Alabama sideline. Mills goes to the glass. He's got to get a timeout right away, and he'll use one right now. Maniero calls his first timeout. The Wolverines break out here early. 10-3. All right, this is the South Georgia band. What, they get 750 bucks in a Michigan cap? Come on, Bo Schembechler, the athletic director. Michigan's one of the richest schools in the country. You got one of the best bands in America. Where is the band today? Can you believe that, Billy? Did he come down here and hire a band for 750 bucks? But I, I, uh, I think we've seen enough of that. The power schools, you know, you get 250,000 every time you move up in a game. The Big Ten's already over three million. And I want to hear the victors played with some verve. Get my guys around here. All right, South Alabama now trying to dig back in this one. What can they do, Billy? Well, they're just going to have to keep the game in the perimeter, keep things open on the inside, because you can just see the white-shirted club in Michigan is so much bigger than they are at every position. They've only gotten off one shot. I mean, look how tough it is. Well, Estaba, who I said is listed about an inch taller than he probably is, is going up against Mills, and then you have the weak side defense coming over there in Rice. Very difficult to punch it inside. I want to point out something right now for all the good folks in Mobile. This team was down 16 at the half to the Crimson Tide. Now Estaba moves out, couldn't get it to fall, and they're going to clean it up on the inside right away, and that foul's going to go against South Alabama. That's against Darden. That's his first. But you and I were joking about Ronnie Arrow in the locker room at the intermission of that game. Uh, what did he punch out? Uh, he, he punched out the blackboard and, of course, uh, challenged each kid individually. This is a fellow with a tremendous amount of experience on the junior college level. When you figure what he did down at San Jacinto, it smashed all junior college coaching records. And that is about as competitive a situation as you can have in the country playing in the in Texas JC ranks because only one team out of that region goes to Hutchison. Billy Michigan has hit four in a row. Good right defense there by the Jaguars. And now it's five of eight. Foul against Michigan. And that's the first on Rice. Rice with two quick field goals, leading the Wolverines right now. They got to try to get high, John Glue. He's their key scoring machine here for South Alabama. What a great basket that was. It really it was. was. It, it reminded me so much of that NC State basket with Wittenberg and Lowe, two guys that really understand each other well. There's the beautiful shot. And he squares up really nicely, coming right or left off that jumper. Boy, he looked good on that. Jeff Hodge with his first field goal now. Robinson coming back to the attack. Rice on the perimeter, knocked down after the shot. And South Alabama trying to put together a run. Mills not turning There's around. Lewis. Lewis uses him in the interference, runs right up his back. Good inside move that time. Showed you a little something knifing in there. Now, bad fundamentals on the part of Terry Mills to run down the court with his back turned not only to the ball, but to the dribbler. They drop into Mills, and there's the size. Let's put him up on the free throw line. He's going to have a chance for a three. This will be the Jaguars' problem all day. Second on Darden here in the early going. Brad Terry Mills had a solid year at Michigan, but considering everything that was expected of him as picked by many as the top high school player in America three years ago coming out of high school, uh, solid but not spectacular. Here comes a player from the Virgin Islands, Neil Smith. Where was he at Pittsburgh for a time? St. John's. He, uh, St. John's. Right. He was up Took in the Took a shot at St. John's. Well, you know, if you look down this, uh, this program, Brent, you'll find that... Uh, with the exception of three players, all have journeyed in from either a junior college or some other, other school. Jemerson, who he replaced, uh, had had an opportunity. Or Jemerson's still in there, played at Marquette. Iron Man in first half. Michigan with an early lead. Size has been the difference, in case you just joined us. South Alabama eliminating Alabama in the first round. Coming right back, and that's Lewis. That's three field goals. He has six, and Hodge has two. They've combined for eight of the nine South Alabama points. So that's the production we expected. Vic Lewis, the uh, commissioner of the Sun Belt, said they can light it up. They get more than 30 here against Michigan. He said they're very capable. One of the best guard tandems in America this year. Well, they blew out Jacksonville in the Sun Belt championship game like no other championship game we played all year. Good hit ahead. They've got to take a chance occasionally to beat Michigan back down the floor which may move tempo up a little bit, but it's still something they have to take advantage of. 
Well, with Billy Packer, I'm Brett Musburger. This is the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. This is game one of our Southeast region doubleheader today. UCLA and North Carolina still to follow. Four turnovers for the Jaguars of South Alabama. Michigan with the Big Ten, 16. South Alabama out of Mobile, nine. Nice D by Jimerson taking Robinson. Bingo for Rice again, six. Now Lewis is an excellent defender, Brent, but he's moving up one notch here, having to take on Rice, who's got him by about three inches. Biggest lead for the Wolverines in the early going. Steps. John Jimerson, a 6'5 forward, turns it over. Had 13 rebounds this year against University of North Carolina Charlotte. Terrence Brodnick is 32, checking into the game for Coach Arrow and the Jaguars. But now we see the combination that played so well last year for a club that was right over the 500 mark. Three guards out there in the lineup makes him even smaller. Battling for Michigan hasn't turned the ball over yet in this game. Not one turnover. There's a Gustavo reaching in on Hughes. Got him from behind. That's the third team foul in South Alabama. Now Hughes surprisingly starting for Vaught. We don't have that story because it came up at the last minute. Vaught, as everybody knows, a third-team all-conference player this year. Outstanding basketball player sitting on the side. Rice. Well, he can shoot that ball beautifully from the outside. And again, because of his height advantage, he just puts it right over the top of Lewis. Now to punch it in out of the paint. Oh, nice. something going. What a great hoop that was that time by Neil Smith. Smith went to a school that was very famous for many years, Laurenburg Institute down in Laurenburg, North Carolina, prep school. They put out so many outstanding players, and their greatest alumnus, of course, is none other than Charlie Scott. Some power move inside to even get it off, much less make it. Carolina fans certainly remember Charlie Scott. Makes it a three-point play. Keeping Arrow in the Jaguars. In the hunt, down 2012. Half court trap. Be tough if they beat it with all that size. He's short on the layup. Boy, back on the move this time. Here's Lewis. They set up off the three and go back to Lewis at the free throw line. And he bangs in his fourth field goal. That's eight points. Brent, what I sense here is Michigan kind of falling into a lull right here. They think they can get shots whenever they want them. Their intensity level is falling down. You know, you can listen dying with that shot. Staba comes out on the move. A three, not there. Rebound, Rice has out of turn. He stepped out of bounds. Jaguars ball. That's Michigan's first turnover of the afternoon. He had Hughes all the way down the floor. He just couldn't get his balance. That's an easy chant for South Alabama. USA, USA in the background. They have the most vocal contingent here in Atlanta on the Southeast region game today. Hey, he's got the muscle smith going in and drew the foul. And that on Hughes is his first. And as we say that, Coach Fisher about to make a substitution. Vaught checking into the game. Vaught's an excellent shooter. The leading shooters percentage-wise in the country has really developed into an outstanding offensive forward. Steve Fisher is a good friend of Doug Collins. Fisher played three years at Illinois State. Got his master's degree at that school in 1968. And he was on Bill Frieder's staff for six years before he got an opportunity he was not expected. Here he is in the second round against these Jaguars in South Alabama. One of the two Cinderella's. Actually, there are a couple. Colorado State is left in South Alabama. I refuse to call any team from Texas the Cinderella team. Tom Fenders has done a great job down there. Here's Rice on the inside for Michigan. And he traveled. Uh, you can see what Michigan's doing. They're throwing the ball because South Alabama is so small out front in that 1-3-1 one -one trap. Michigan can throw right over it, but Rice has to be a little bit more patient. An excellent position. This is a terrific run now for South Alabama. Seven straight points in it has allowed them to pull back to within four. Clean it up in the middle right now. Just a little conversation. No foul going to be called. 
Talking to the captain. Straighten him out now, he said. <laughs> he got my attention. Bob Barnett was the umpire you were watching, Dave Libby. The referee stepping back in, and Gene Mangi, the third official, tossed the ball over to Dave. So that was Bob Barnett, the enforcer, <laughs> down underneath early. Six of eight from the field. Remember when South Alabama couldn't get a shot off? Well, now that they're getting them off, they are deadly. 75%. This is a terrific shooting team. That squares up again. Oh, look at Lewis, Lewis man. Underneath. What a board for a guard. Not takes it back away. But Michigan trying to strike too quickly. They're trying to get back. Because they think it's easy, they're just putting them up as soon as they come down. With all their balance, if they'll take their time, they'll be able to re rebound at will. Tapped in by Rice underneath. And it's 22 to 16. Michigan has led it all the way. They are up by six. Their biggest lead was 11 here in the first half. We have inside of 12 minutes to play. The winner here moves on to Lexington, Kentucky in the Southeast region. Saba couldn't get it up, and they are calling a hell ball, but the possession arrow pointing toward the Jaguars. They'll take it from out of bounds, and they'll try to set a play up. Nice intensity by Terry Mills here on defense. Good reach in. You see so many guys going for the block now on the way up instead of trying to get it when the man releases. Lewis tied up one of the stop by Lewis oh, comes he, out with it. He's Boy, fun he's to watch inside, isn't he? Bet. That's 10 points for him already, Billy. Billy, well, yeah, nice trap. Jaguars have been very impressive after that early run. I mean, this is going to go against Michigan. Their crowd is now alive. That's the first personal on Ramil Robinson. I mean, Arrow's got this team rocking. Well, he's shown them a little bit of matchup, a little bit of man-to-man, -man, the half-court zone trap. Michigan has not been patient getting into their offense at all. They find themselves up only four. Now, Demetrius Caleb, he's number 13 checking in. And Griffin sits down. Caleb was very important down the stretch. A good and, second uh, half. You know, opening round victory. Michigan made it all the way to the regional in Seattle last year. There's Hodge missing again. And Vaught yanks it away. So he has missed his last two from the perimeter, but he's a great shooter. He'll keep stroking from out there. There's Robinson. Get it to Mills on the inside. Got to feed the big fella. That's, right. That's what he complains about from time to time. He doesn't touch it enough, so coach said go out and demand it. Bingo! And a foul called against Michigan. That was Broderick hitting from the outside, and with his three-guard offense, Broderick gets down the court before his matchup man, who in this case is Rice, can get over to him. And the foul. It's on Vaught. That's his first foul. It was a three-point field goal. Pulls the Jaguars back to within three. Six team fouls already on Michigan. Vaught above everybody in these last two rebounds. Let's see if Michigan can get patient enough to pound it down inside. Not the answer. Again on the inside, an offensive foul is called against South Alabama. Against the... Uh, it's against the Robinson. That. It's against Emil yeah. Robinson again. And that's his second already. Brent, if you have anything that you'd want to say about Ramil, he has to mentally understand what's being done by the defensive club. He's got all the physical tools he could possibly have, and he's got great determination. But it's pretty easy now to see what Michigan has to do to be effective offensively, and they're not doing it. Punch the ball down inside, be patient. With those three rebounders in there, they can offset anything that South Alabama can do against them. Their matchup problems come on the other end where South Alabama has the advantage for those three guards. Sean Higgins coming into the ball game, one of the most talented players that's uh, come into college ball in a while. He's been in a slump at 6'9". He can play on the outside, and you see what they think of him in the fact that he's going in for Romeo Robinson, which puts Caleb back in the ball-handling position. Coach Fisher immediately went over to Robinson to talk to him. Lewis misses the back end of his one and one. And they're right back in. Trailing by two. Michigan ball. Here's their main man. Rice up high. Did not get the roll. He'll... Oh. And it was a clear out going against Michigan. Well, what? Second on Rice. Brent, what's happening right now 
is that the Michigan players just so much bigger. They're moving in there offensively and drawing those charges. South Alabama really well coached on that technique. Now, Fisher, we'll see if he doesn't start to go to work here on the officials a little bit. Yeah, he's starting to bark from that Michigan sideline over there. Here's a replay of it, Billy. Well, they spread out, and what happens is that Glenn Rice thinks he can just take somebody anytime he wants to. Broderick steps right in there nicely, draws the charge on him. He's built like a little fire plug, so he's going to get down underneath a guy like Glenn Rice. And I would say Steve Fisher needs to be a little bit more emphatic if he's going to work that official. Well, the Fisher had eight fouls called against him already, and South Alabama only three. And they go full court with the trap. And Caleb able to break it off the dribble. Oh, and, and sticks it in for an offensive foul. A charge is called against Michigan. Brent, not a smart play. He's got a three-on-one fast break. Estaba has only one thing he can do is stand and wait here and hope for the charge. You pass that off, stop at the foul line, and make an easy play out of it. Smart play by Estaba. South Alabama has battled back into a 24-all tie after trailing by 11. Estaba wants it. He's got Mills on his hip. Estaba for their first lead. He's got it. Well, you're going to love these kids. Staba put Terry Mills right on his hip in the low post. Looks like a repeat of the shot he made to put them finally ahead of Alabama the other night. Turns right into him, uses the body and the emotion. Fisher was asking the scores table, when do we get a television timeout? The clock is at 10.08. Remember, during the tournament, you get only three breaks, unlike four. He didn't want to use a timeout. He's going to wait for a natural stoppage at this moment, at least. That's his decision. He's down by two, trailing for the first time in this game. The Jaguars looking him right in the face. They force a travel on the turnover now. Michigan has turned it over seven of their last ten possessions. Michigan desperately needs to regroup. That's the result of a 17-4 run over the last four minutes for Coach Arrow's team. His wife anxiously watching, and that's Nelda, daughter Ailey. She's going to catch a little nap. She says, I'll tune you back in on the second half. And this one was really decided. They punch Beautiful it in move. again on Michigan. They've got Michigan in early foul trouble, and Smith with seven. Three starters with two fouls for Coach Fisher and the Wolverines. Brent, what, what happened to Michigan early on? You see Griffin coming back into the ball game with Hughes. Vaught goes out with Callip. Also, Ramil Robinson in there. But what happened to him early on is the fact that the shots were coming so easy. I think they fell into a feeling of, that they could get complacent against this club. They do. South Alabama does not look impressive size-wise, but they're very quick, very well coached, and very well organized. Here's that half-court trap again. Derek Turner has checked in at guard for South Alabama, too, while Michigan was making its wholesale substitutions, and they're able to punch it in to Mills for that field goal. Nine points now. Rice, Mills, and Robinson have 24. Michigan's points here this afternoon. Trailing by two, 28-26. Time remaining first half. Smith and stop again. Great position down inside. There's a double team by Rice. Underneath, another whistle. This one goes against South Alabama. Smith's first. And that is the team's fourth foul. Already Michigan over the limit. The whistles here have gone against Michigan. Now, uh, Brent, early on, of course, it's been South Alabama spread Michigan out with their quickness in this trap. But Michigan could get themselves in great shape foul-wise if they start punching down inside. South Alabama wouldn't have the troops to replace. That's it as an example right there. Wouldn't fall for Mills that time, and the Jaguars come back out. Nobody coming from the weak side to rebound. Foul on the shot. Offensive board by Estaba. Losing his balance, he had to throw it up, and so Robinson applies some pressure one-on-one. -on -one. He'll go in himself. Rolled out, but he'll come up to the free-throw line on that foul. 
but I don't know if anybody in the country can take it to the hoop as a guard any stronger than Ramil Robinson, particularly on the break. So a great guy to have, maybe not necessarily having to be the distributor, but the recipient of some of those fast breaks, as he was when Gary Grant was on this club. Georgetown already a winner today, 81-74 over Notre Dame. Georgetown moves on to the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Duke will play Minnesota in that East Regional semifinal, and Georgetown will play the winner of the Iowa-North Carolina State game. The winner here will move on to Lexington. And they will play the winner of the second game, North Carolina and UCLA. Brent, kind of interesting, as I mentioned, talking to, to Ronnie Arrow earlier, he said he really recruited heavily on Robinson. Estaba going to sit out there. Recruited heavily. He did not think that Ramil Robinson would sit out a year as he turned out to do at the University of Michigan. He felt that if he had gone to junior college, he'd have had him down at San Jack. Last time we saw Ramil, 29.6 assists and five rebounds against North Carolina in the NCAA last year in a losing cause. That was Jimerson who replaced this time. Coming off that double low. Lewis has been the mainstay. Even when things were going badly, Lewis was able to glide inside and kept his head. He's been a key figure for the Jaguars here. They get the ball in his hands. What a great save he made against Alabama. I know the shot was perfect, but what a hustling, scrambling save he had the other day. Oh, nice, solid screen. They bring the shot clock down to eight. Battle balls out of bounds, Michigan. Those three guards running an old-time three-man weave out there. They're so used to playing with each other. Higgins back in the game. Rice sits down. So Steve Fisher continues to rotate the Michigan bench. And Jeff Hodge back in after sitting down. And uh, Hodge has struggled so far in this game. He has only one field goal here in the, in the first half. Shot behind the board. They'll try to get Hodge involved here if they can. He's a great shooter. They're looking for it, but he was sealed up that time. Nice job by Griffin on defense. He's had to play some of the tougher guys. Basically his role. Rodnick seeing a lot of minutes here in his first half. Tough job for Higgins trying to handle him. Not the way at Griffin again chasing Hodge and uh, causing some problems. But what I think we might start seeing pretty soon because Griffin and Higgins have got tough assignments with Hodge and Brodnick. See some one-on-one -on -one clear outs. Rebound. Higgins puts it on the floor to Robinson. Down the baseline. That's what he does, Billy. That's what you said he does yep. as well as anybody. He's got that barrel chest of his. He's so quick. Fearless when he takes it inside. And he has given the Wolverines a one-point lead. They were up by 11. Change their defenses now. Get out of that man-to-man. -man. Jerry Mills up top trying to play the one-two-two. -two. Mills can't get everybody to understand the defense they're in. Hodge with the three. Short again. He has been just a little short all game long. Smith doing his job in there, isn't he? Six foot six, probably closer to six four and a half. Forcing the steal, that strength was able to keep it after he deflected. Goes to the glass, and the foul is against Ramil Robinson. That's his third, and that's a big moment here in the first half of this game. Freddie got in foul trouble. Again, Xavier picked up four. He's going to drive all the way, and again, uh, Ronnie Arrow having his fellas very well drilled. Instead of trying to go for the block, they play precision basketball. And that was Jeff Hodge who got down underneath and drew the third personal, and Robinson will have to sit down on the Michigan bench at the 6-19 mark. Caleb comes in for him. This really changes things around. Puts a lot of pressure on Caleb to go ahead and direct this offense. We're going back to a 1-3-1 defense now. Zone defense. Look for Hodge to get it clear. Billy, what impresses you about South Alabama, what you've seen so far? Well, I like the fact that they're patient. They take good shots. Whenever you have guard play like this, you can control pitfall. Whistle underneath off the missed shot going against Michigan. Higgins pushing off. Smith going the line. He's really doing a good job on the interior there with his rebounding. One of the things about South Alabama, they haven't scored here in the last three and a half minutes. They're down by a point, and speaking of scoring, 
Here comes Rice. He's got 10 points in the first half for Michigan. And Griffin sits down. No matter how they mix up this lineup, Brent, it looks like they put in nothing but guys 6, 8, and up in that front line. Four fellas over 6, 8 right now on the floor. Hughes, Higgins, Rice, and Mills. Fisher would just like to erase that interim tag, and he knows one way to do it. Stay on the Battle his way to Seattle, <laughs> and there's no way Bo Schimbeckler can call Bobby Knight and say, who do you recommend? That's right. I'm the only undefeated coach hey. in the country. Hey, Bo was telling me. As uh, the Jaguars put a little pressure on here. Now Michigan, let's see if they can pick it up, and I'll get back to that story here. That's pretty they pretty do get effective. it in to Mills at the top, whipping it to Rice. That smooth jump shot, he bangs it in. Anyway. Bo was saying that Ryder called me. He says, well, what are you going to do? And uh, Bo says, oh, I'm going to call Bobby. And he says, the next thing I know, I'm reading a paper I've offered the Michigan job to Bobby Knight. He says, Bobby Knight's going to leave it in Indiana. He says, what are these guys doing? But they are good friends, and certainly there will be a contact there. Of course, Bobby will nominate somebody he can beat twice anyway. Here comes Higgins down, squeezing the trigger on the move for that jump shot. Very talented player, and of course, John Higgins in the middle. The controversy at another school that's been in the headlines so much, the University of Kentucky. 33 30. Back to man to man now. Hard to figure out. Glenn Rice on a Stava. Try a three again. Stava with an offensive rebound. Couldn't get the handle, but coming back and pulling the trigger. And hit the roll is that man again, Neil Smith. That's 11 points for Smith off the bench. I don't know if he learned that technique in the Virgin Islands. <laughs> that looks more like inner city New York ball right there. Mills. Nobody there to rebound. Staba, quick outlet to Hodge. Hodge gets to the middle, and he'll pull it back out. Nice change on the pass that time by Hodge. Missed another three. Caleb with possession has Higgins and Mills with him. This is Higgins. Good no call that time. Smith is exhausted right now for South Alabama. He's been working hard inside against taller people. Michigan leading it by three. That's the time left in the first half. South Alabama only one of nine from three-point land. That's starting to add up against them. If they'd have hit a couple of these threes here in the first half, it'd really be applying the pressure now. They can find that outside shot. Estaba moves his range outside. That's his second field goal. What impresses you about Estaba is the way he works down on the inside. Eddie Stanky was once a baseball coach at South Alabama. He'd appreciate somebody like an Estaba. Hard work in there. Michigan starting to get more down on the box right now. Oh, oh, what a touch. Now they're packing it down in the box. Estaba and Smith really tired. Ronnie Arrow may need to give them a timeout right before the half. They can't go much longer. See, he's just exhausted and not, not handling the ball. Here's Hodge. Still misfiring. Oh, and boy. a foul against Hughes. Juni Lewis, some kind of rebounder. Had a sister that uh, he played against often who holds a lot of records at the University of Pittsburgh as a basketball player. You know, Billy, when you watch it, I'm talking about Juni Lewis. He probably gets to the glass as quick as any guard, and he would love to lead this team on the road to Lexington, where the Southeast region will be played. Already Oklahoma and Virginia are there, and the winner of these two games will join them. Lexington, Kentucky, UCLA, and North Carolina still coming your way from Atlanta. It tells you what kind of an athlete this young man is. 15 points, 12 rebounds against a club like Alabama, playing the guard point position. Very difficult to do. It's that free throw, but it was knocked out of bounds by Michigan. So when you come back, it'll be South Alabama's ball, 318 to go. Michigan. It's the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. Michigan leading South Alabama 37-35. Billy, it's been a seesaw affair. It really has. South Alabama doing an excellent job spreading things out. They got great play, I thought, 
and maybe the key was when Smith went into the ball game. Now, but watch the mismatches create a little screen, not even a good screen that time set by Mills, but it puts Lewis on Rice down inside. No chance whatsoever to handle him in the low post, something that Michigan could take advantage of all day long. Jeff Hodge struggling here in the first half. He is only one of six from the floor. So you have Mills on Broderick right now. It, you know, a clear out taking Mills or a clear out taking any of the fellas that are stepping out on these guards should work. Well, that's number two on Vaught. They went over the limit a long time ago. Quickness getting the bigger fellas into foul trouble here in the first half. It is that, Fred, but again, Michigan, on the other hand, could take advantage of their size and power by being a little more patient down in the low post on the other end. They're getting spread out and getting beat to the wide rebound. Lewis makes it 11 of 15 for Coach Arrow from that free throw line. Michigan has scored only two points from the line. That's a nine point difference. Michigan still leading it by one, make it a tie right now. Fundamentally so sound in every phase of the game. When you go down the other end, watch, he's matched up. They're playing his own trap right now, but he gets matched up with the big guys down on the other end of the court. Rice, a three-pointer. Oh, That's 17 it. points in the first half for Rice. would love to have him play against anybody's press because he's going to be open on those wings. Stava fouled, and that's number two on Griffin. There's not a starter for Michigan who hasn't picked up at least two fouls here in the first half. Robinson with three, and Hughes off the bench also has picked up two. Higgins and Caleb, one apiece. This man played for the Venezuelan national team in both the Olympics and the Pan Am Games at a very young age. Bo Schimbeckler told me before the game, he said, I could never coach basketball. I could never run this. The officials have too much power. And I just saw Bo up there just waving his hands in disgust. Seek me halfway out of the floor. Look at the stop it. Just beat him to the ball again. Michigan's ball. Good dive and hustle there by Astaba, but good call by the official as it hit out of bounds for Michigan. Again, they go back into the half-court trap. Well, Rice was ready to shoot that jumper again. Mills on the turnaround. Throwing some different looks at him. Nice he gives it up to Lewis. Very unselfish move. Lewis was 16, picking up the slack as Hodge has only two, but that's 18 between them. And Brodnick has tossed in five for the backcourt, including one tray. And Lewis guarding Rice right now, man to man. He doesn't. He fronted in, didn't realize where the ball was, just a bad delivery. They're starting to jaw a little bit at each other now. It's been a tough matchup for Michigan because whenever any of these quick guards get away from a big man, they've just been wide open. This is a challenge for Coach Fisher, the interim man. Will they pay attention when he has to get on them? Michigan has been sloppy after building that huge lead. And without Ramil Robinson to run the show out there, he's been handicapped somewhat. Griffin squares up and bangs it in. Good look by Caleb. And the Wolverines at four. Time remaining in the first half. A lot of screening down inside. Estaba down. He got a shot in his stomach. Estaba in pain. Beyond the end line. See the play on the inside. There's the shot. Nastaba got one right in the stomach by Vaught. And even with three officials, they don't catch it all. Well, I didn't think that was especially dirty. Did you? No, I don't. It, 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 it wasn't flagrant. It wasn't yeah. flagrant. It's just a good shot. But it is a foul. I mean, on a scale of one to ten, that was a two compared to what McCurdy was throwing yesterday for Ball State. And that's a pretty good shot. He hit him with a little bit of forearm right in the stomach. Gustavo 
was tired anyway. We gave him a chance to go down. He gets a little He's getting his breath. And you know, it might have helped South Alabama in this respect too. Because of the difference in size, they're worn down a little bit. So they get an extra two minute rest or so here. Well, again, Georgetown a winner today. They eliminated Notre Dame, 81-74. They'll play the winner of the Iowa-North Carolina State game. Here, the winner will take on the winner of our second game, North Carolina-UCLA. Yeah. Put it down. Scored a field goal. Jeff Hodge. Frank Griffin did a very nice job defensively on Hodge that time, but he's got that ability to split the seams. The MVP of the Sun Belt Tournament, most valuable player this year in the league. Three-time All-Sun Belt first-teamer. One of the great players in the conference history and the number two all-time scorer at the school. Remember the great teams that Cliff Ellis had in South Alabama. This is not their first shot in the NCAA tournament play yet. Outstanding players with Rory White and Terry Catledge. Daryl Nelson checking in for South Alabama. They don't want a late foul picked up on Lewis with 50 seconds to go. Ron Darrell right, right now is a turnover, so he can hold it for the last shot of the half. North Carolina State with an early impressive lead on Iowa. First confrontation between the ACC and the Big Ten. Nice move by Fisher to get two guards on the floor for the last possession. There's the turnover. And they've got a chance to hold it for the last shot. A lot of time. Hodge goes right now for a three. I thought they'd hold it, Brent, but when you got a shooter like that, you might as well let him fire. They're in the man-to-man. -man. Mills trying to get position on Smith. Away from the ball, it goes against Michigan again, and that's three on Mills. Brent, no excuse for that. Terry Mills had Smith on his hip. He just kept pushing and pushing and eventually picked up the foul. Report from the bench is that Staba really had the wind knocked out of him. He's all right. I'm going to say I'm not shot. Rice back into the ball game. You know what they'd like to set up down on the sideline for him. I bet you Ronnie Arrow, if the shots are made, to pick up full court. Try to make them really work that seven seconds to get the ball over the half-court area. He's got another shot coming. This is a very well-coached South Alabama team. They have demonstrated that Arrow, who came from San Jacinto, knows how to run a basketball team. into their locker room. So Arrow and the Jaguars with a chance to become the true Cinderella of this tournament, leading it by three as Judy Lewis with 16 and Hodge with eight lead the way for the Wolverines in the first half. Rice, their leading scorer with 17. Mills contributed in 11 picked up regular season percentage. Michigan has elevated its game. Three-point shooting. South Alabama unable to get it done there as they normally do. Leading scores. It has been a satin smooth Lewis for the Jaguars. And of course, as usual, Rice for Michigan. Now, Billy, we, we have got a uh, situation with several players who are in foul trouble here now for Michigan on the inside. Look at the difference here internally. And yet you believe there's a way for the Wolverines to take advantage in this game and start to dominate. How would that be? 
Well, first thing, on, on their defensive end of the floor, what South Alabama has been able to do is get the wide rebound, spreading it out, getting a lot of movement and quickness to take advantage of getting the foul trouble on Michigan. On the other end of the floor, Michigan has not been patient enough to pound the ball down inside. When you've got a guy like Rice who extends the defense with his great shooting on the perimeter and have rebounders like Vaught and Mills that can come in if he misses with the putbacks and pound the ball down inside so they can get some offensive positioning, you can start building up fouls in the other uh, in the other regard. But if you take a look at these two clubs, Michigan can afford some free throws. South Alabama can. All right, we're going to continue. We'll bring you the second half right after this message. And we're going to be on the local station. A basketball championship is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. MCI, let us show you how good a long-distance company can be. And by the heartbeat of America, today Chevrolet. Ready to start the second half with the Jaguars of South Alabama. Already have eliminated the Crimson Tide. Now try to do the same to Michigan of the Big Ten. Here we go. Emil Robinson with three personal fouls. Hammer the ball, and the Wolverines turn it over on the first possession. A shaky start again, and the Jaguars come back down. That is 11 turnovers right now for Coach Steve Fisher and Michigan. Michigan shows a little 1-3-1 one, one matchup. Good hands. Mills outside takes him out of rebounding position that far away from the basket. Plus, he doesn't run the break that well, so he's really out of position if anything happens. Great cut by Lewis, but good defensive help that time. Hughes, he gets it back from Robinson. And another score it. The charge. But this time, he's going to get the field goal. And that makes it a one-point game. Brent, and that's his third person. Brent, in this particular defensive alignment, you have Robinson, and you have two monsters out on the wings. So they had a three-on-one fast break on, but neither one quick enough to convert on the wings, and that being Hughes and Terry Mills. Again, they're matching up in this zone. Five, three. If they're going to get that kind of movement, Hodge is going to get a few more opportunities like that. Four points, South Alabama lead. Hodge not even guarding Griffin when he moves outside. I swoop it inside to the big man, and he draws the foul this time. And on Darden, that's three. Darden rather silent in that first half. Actually didn't even get very many minutes in because he got such a good job by Smith. The Michigan crowd just gave the officials a standing ovation. Well, they outscored him by 13, they being South Alabama in the first half, but I really thought the calls were warning. Michigan didn't pull up. Well, they may have been warned, but I've never seen so many charging calls ever in a tournament. Game. Well, maybe not, Brent, but they, what happened, Michigan kids were not pulling up South Alabama quicker, getting down underneath them any time they went in the lane. We've got six offensive fouls called. South Alabama only six fouls for the game. They bring it back down now with a three-point lead. There's nice a great deal. steal. Welcome those of you who just joined us to see Ramil Robinson on a bust out for the Wolverines. They have pulled back to within one. You're watching one of the legitimate Cinderella's in this tournament if they can win this game. South Alabama, they have been very impressive. They were down by 11 in the first half. I'm going to bring in Billy Packer here to give you an overview on this South Alabama team. Billy? A lot of quickness. They played as much of that first half with three guards in the lineup, which negated uh, the, the size Michigan half. There's a walk that time on Gustavo, who went out early in, or late in the uh, first half, got hit in the stomach, lost his breath. He's back in there now. Looks like he's in good shape. That's the foul situation. It has been the big story of the game. And Brent, I think the biggest story of all is Robinson's three. He cannot afford to pick up that fourth early here in the second half. They really need him on the floor. There have been 18 fouls called on Michigan and six on South Alabama in this game. But as Billy Packer points out, in his opinion, it's been legitimate. You can't blame the officiating. It has been the South Alabama setting up and drawing the charge. Juni Lewis buried down in that zone. Let's see if he comes back out so he doesn't get caught down under there with all the Giants. Able to use his jumper a little more. Griffin goes down and he couldn't draw one. 
And as a result, Jimerson jams it in off the glass. Three points for the game, his first field goal. Now, Michigan looks like they decided they can't match up very well in the man-to-man, -man, so they've gone to that matchup 1-3-1 one, one zone. South Alabama sizing it up really well. Bryce missing oh, that. Lewis is a great rebounding guard. He took an accidental hand on the left side of his face. You can see him reach up toward his eye as he came back down. You're going to love watching Junie Lewis, number 11. And here's the other half of their tandem of peanut butter and jelly. Number five is Hodge. He shot poorly in the first part of this game, but he has started to warm up here. See, Lewis, Lewis is trying to lose Terry Mills down on the baseline. Boy, if they get production for their forwards, will they be tough? Jimerson banging in one for their coach, Ronnie Arrow, who came from San Jacinto Junior College to take over this program in Mobile, Alabama. And it is a strong team. They have built their biggest lead now, 54-49. Robinson can't get it. Michigan's got it back. Hughes bangs it in. I think you pointed this out well. Hodge has not been able to get away from Griffin. There he is for the first time in a while. Just going to say, he hasn't been able to get away from Griffin. They set a great pick down on the baseline. Griffin fell down now and hit his head on the camera. We have also got a foul called against Darden. He, he swung swore, his right? arm as he turned and came back down, and that's going to be his fourth personal foul. And we've got a player down beyond the end line. Darden's fourth. That'll have to bring Smith back into the ballgame, who had the great first half, but really hurt South Alabama in regard to the depth. They just don't have it in the front line. Griffin, he intended to. We've got a break here. We can show you a summary as to what's happened. That's the foul situation. Field goal percentage. And you see how Michigan has kept South Alabama under control from that three-point range. But just a moment ago, you saw their main man, Jeff Hodge, get loose. He's the fellow who buried that three to beat Alabama. He was one of five from three-point land in the first half. This half, Jeff Hodge perfect with his two attempts. Caleb back on the floor. It's going to hurt to have Griffin out of the ball game because he is their lead defender. Brings Higgins in. Maybe a better score, but obviously doesn't play the other end of the floor as well. Robinson is up two, and they get it on the inside for Rice, who punches in. Another field goal through the foul on Jimerson. That's Rice's first of the second half. 19 points for the game. Good move quickly to the ball as Glenn Rice. Jimerson gets behind him. Not much he could do there at all. Rice uh, has equal ability, whether he be inside or moving out with that silky jumper of his. This is a team recruited by Bill Frieder and coached today by Steve Fisher, his assistant for six years. Frieder moving on to Arizona State. That controversy unfolding just as the tournament was getting underway. Frieder was in Atlanta. He was in attendance. He watched Michigan win game one. Not here today, however. Oh, great block. But he comes right back up. I'll tell you, Neil Smith, who was strong in the first half, along with Jimerson, getting the job done on the inside. But Rice is a handful. What do you, you know, if you, if you try to play low post on him, he moves outside. If you go outside, he backdoors you to get you inside. Very gifted offensive player. Staba, like the Rockets. That's what he does best. Continue to work and work and work. Gets the most out of his talent. Brent, have you seen him turn left yet? He goes right every time. You think somebody'd get over on that side of him? Well, he was out on Rice. He's 10 of 16. Here he comes again. This is a 17th shot. He's 11 down out of his 17 shots. He's having a monster. 24 points. Keeping Michigan tight. Trailing 61-58. Put him in perspective. He's led the Big Ten in scoring two years in a row. It hasn't been done since the early 80s when Jay Vincent did it. See if he comes back right. Here he comes. Oh, he has three defenders, but because of the foul problem, they didn't seal up, and they get a put back on the other side. Neil Smith with 14 points now. Now, you remember how tired Smith got early on, so that really hurts them up when they've got Darden out on foul trouble. 
Michigan down five, nice. and Mills cuts it to three. And here's where Michigan can really take advantage of the power of Mills down inside. Make Smith work on both ends of the floor. A good little man against a good big man. That's what we're watching here this afternoon. A little man with a lead, but the big man coming back down now. He can move to within at least one and tied with a tray. And he's looking for it. Higgins didn't get it. And Rice with an offensive rebound. A turnaround, a little too hard. And Hodge out. And here comes Lewis. Applying some pressure on Caleb. He'll go to the glass. I mean, he got right past. Hey, do you like this kid? Can he play? You bet. He's a fine defender, handles the ball well, can shoot it. Steve Fisher will use a timeout. He's down five. 13-35. Michigan of the Big Ten losing by five. So far, that conference has dominated. A perfect 7-0. Michigan, however, losing by five. And Iowa and North Carolina State are tied at 41 at the half. And those are some of the conferences struggling. The Southeastern blown away. 0-5. The main man hangs in another one. He's smooth. 27 points for Rice. Freddy has unlimited range as we saw right at the end of the half when he put up that shot to try to beat the buzzer. He was out there about 30 feet. Well, he gets it back to high. Off a of fake. Swings it over to the open man. Lewis again underneath, couldn't tap it in, but he had rebounding position again, though. He did. He's so quick on the inside, and he is a tough man to block out, in fairness to the Michigan players, because of that great quickness. But they do have to put a body on him. And because Michigan does not fast break with this big club they have on the floor, South Alabama hasn't gotten burned when he's back underneath the basket on the transition. South Alabama scored on seven of its last eight possessions. Very effective here at the offensive end. There's their double low offense getting Mike. Good job. No doubt about that one, was there? Ran the double low cut. And Sean Higgins expected Lewis to come back out the other side. <laughs> and he just reversed himself to get open inside. Now watch this. Here comes. They figure he's going out the other side. Ramil Robinson came over the top. He reversed and came back in there and drew easy two fouls. I go back to round one. South Alabama and Alabama. At one point, the Jaguars trailed by 19. At the half, they were down 16. And then Ronnie Arrow exploding in the locker room punched a hand right through the blackboard in there this team came back battled its way into contention trailed it by a point time running out scrambling for a loose ball got it to Hodge and sunk the three Alabama missed and here they are threatening to do it again but that time it was bought with his first field goal Lewis for the day with 18 points four rebounds and three assists number 11 just giving it up and that's about his average for the year, not quite. Here's Smith going to the glass. Offensive. Yep. They're being consistent. And another standing ovation from the Michigan crowd. Well, that's all you can ask of officials to be consistent. They've been calling the charge all day, and they're still getting it. <laughs> you bet you over there throwing his hands up in the air saying, We got one. We got one. <laughs> They earned one. <laughs> yeah, you I get them when you earn them. The best way to put it. You need to stop crybabying and get in and play some basketball. <laughs> On the inside. And this one goes against South Alabama. Esteban's second. Esteban going in, trying to set a solid screen here. They called him for a trip. Now, things have turned around with regard to the whistles. There were only five fouls against South Alabama in the first half. Already in this half, there have been five. With Missouri leading Texas, Tommy Fender's team, by nine, 59 to 50. Right man to man, Lewis still trying to handle Rice, who's trying to bury him down in on the baseline. Nice movement by Michigan right now. First time today, they really got some quick legs in offense. Let's see if they get something out of it. Watch way at the top. And there's Lewis. Oh, that's an elbow. That's an elbow. That's you. Yep. He got him. Unnecessary. He had a good rebound. A flagrant elbow being thrown by Lewis. 
Let's watch and see if Rice was up on him. Well, they won't call it flagrant or he'd be in real problems here, but you can see he's just trying to get him off when he threw it up. Didn't make any contact. Michigan's ball. That's a big possession, though. Just so many times. You get a feeling in this game, just so many possessions South Alabama's going to get the rest of the way. Michigan's starting to settle down. Higgins got it through the baseline. Bought the open man, couldn't put it away. Hodge out on the move, and here comes Lewis. As he came around the corner, the foul goes against Michigan. And that is number three on Bott. Bott's really had an off day for him, had an excellent year, developed into an outstanding outside shooter, hadn't been able to get it going at all today. Scores tied at 67 with 11.28 to go. The winner will play the winner of the second game here at Atlanta in Lexington, Kentucky. The athletic director who will make that coaching decision regarding who replaces Bill Frieder at Michigan, Bo Schimbeckler, has his entire football coaching staff down here with him. Gary Moeller, longtime defensive assistant up there with Bo. Mind is open with regards to assistant Steve Fisher. That's the foul situation on Michigan struggling so much in the first half. Had to keep up a steady rotation of substitutes because of the foul problems. And now Jimerson returns and they'll give Lewis a break at this point. Nice piece of substituting by Raniero, realizing that the young man has had to battle so hard on both ends of the floor, distributing the ball on offense and being responsible for Rice on defense. So it's Jimerson over there on Rice now. He's got Lewis out. He's his leading scorer with 21. One of his leading rebounders with five. O'Neal wanting to post up inside. There's Bott on a turnaround. Short. Michigan cannot get it to fall. Rice is the man with the touch for the Wolverines, and everyone else has been off and on and struggling. South Alabama leading it by a point. O'Neal's well, got quick hands. All of the way he holds on when he steals. Man, is he strong. Yep. One of the few guards in the country who can do that. That's 12 points for Robinson. And it puts Michigan up by a point, 69-68. Now Long can arrow leave Lewis out. Fred, he's got to go with him a couple of minutes. A lot of time left to go in this ball game. Hodge picks up the slack. Short. And it's Robinson pressuring again. Here's Rice to the glass. That is a much tougher shot than it looked. Yep. And he's got that bang shot down beautifully. But see, you can see Michigan's a club that can really run that break. And they can't wait now. Got to get him back. He yep, is so get, important to this team. Get him back. Staba. Boy, he'll battle. He'll find some daylight, won't he? I'd love to have him in a maze if I was lost. Staba, leave me out of it. To the right, to the right, to the right. Goes him back to within a point. And Rice took it outside. Staba rebounding. And South Alabama has an opportunity to regain the lead. Stop at the top. Short. Yanked away by Ramil Robinson. Clean it up and knocked out of bounds by South Alabama. Good hustle by Jimerson getting back on defense. We got a television break. And some of the players are happy for that. We'll be right back. Well, let me take you through the brackets that are active today in the East. Georgetown has already beaten Notre Dame, so they advance to the regional semifinal. North Carolina State and Iowa tied at the halftime. And Tucson, Evansville against Seton Hall, and UTEP against Indiana. Meanwhile, in the Midwest, Texas, Missouri, Colorado State against Syracuse, they will join Louisville and Illinois in Minneapolis. And of course, here, watching South Alabama and Michigan with UCLA and North Carolina to follow, they move on to Lexington, already there, Oklahoma and Virginia. Oklahoma are coming back, and there is Steve Fisher's wife, Angie. And they've got a son, Mark, 10 years old, alongside the Michigan coach's wife. She's probably as nervous as Steve is. Brent, what I'd be nervous about right now is Romeo Robinson making sure he doesn't pick up another foul because as long as he's out there, you get the feeling Michigan's going to stay in their pattern. It's been much nice. better. They battle, and South Alabama comes away with it. Now they trail Michigan by a point. We've got 9-10 to go. 
That timeout really had to help Judy Lewis because he only got a blow of about 40 seconds. And they took him out. They wanted to rest him for a couple of minutes, I'm sure. But they came back in there when they fell behind. Robinson taking him. And here's Hodge working his way through that baseline pipeline, looking for screens, trying to rub off and get shooting room. They're keeping a taller man on him in Higgins right now. The shot clock going down to 10. They get it to Lewis underneath. He jumps up and hits the field goal. Shows you the confidence Ronnie Arrow has in him. They were going to throw that lob to try to beat Alabama. Here we're talking about a guy six foot four. I'm telling you something. He's not in the same league physically. But I'll tell you something. He's a Michael Jordan of this team. He's unbelievable when he gets through there. Mills up in the air, outside. He gets the ball. He has scored 18. Rice leading the way with 29. And Mills is the second leading scorer for the Wolverines here this afternoon. Two solid games in a row for Mills in this uh, NCAA bracket. Smith is short and right back to South Alabama. And a foul is called underneath. Could that be Ramil Robinson's fourth? Let's see who it's called on here. That is his fourth. He's walking over towards Fisher's bench. Well, Ramil got caught down inside. He is a powerful guy, but in this particular game, he's best out around the top of the key. And Vaught will come in. So who does Coach Fisher have on the floor right now? Who are the five players out there? Well, he's going to... He's going to be in a situation where he stays with Higgins on the inside. He's got to get uh, he's got to get Ramil Robinson out of the ball game. So he's going to come back in with Demetrius Callum at that guard position. He played well in that second half in their win over Xavier, and he's going to be called upon to do the same thing here. Brent stays with Higgins and Mills up front. And of course, Glenn Rice, who has been the man offensively today. What about the South Alabama line? Roderick is still staying with peanut butter and jelly. They haven't made any substitutions. Smith out in the ball game and Estaba there as well. Another foul against Michigan, and that's number one, number two on Caleb. You go back to that three-guard offense, which should be fairly effective out here because you, you have a mismatch on one end of the floor or the other. And if it wasn't for Lewis, South Alabama would really have a problem on defense. But let's see how Michigan tries to match up against these three guards. I'll make a prediction for you. Hodge missing. With as many whistles and the way they're being blown, free throws will decide this game before it's over. Well, you see it's Hodge down there on Higgins. 6-9 against 6-3. Here comes South Alabama. Knocked out of bounds by Michigan. It's South Alabama's ball. Hodge, Saba, and it was knocked free by a Wolverine. Hodge is kind of interesting. He constantly wants to be the recipient on the break of the pass. He's willing to give it up. For a guy that's a, such a prolific scorer, he will give it up. Lewis missing. Michigan ball. Quick outlet to Caleb. Caleb will take it off the glass. Misfiring. Mills rebounding. Slapped away, and he'll shoot a pair. Without about that foul on Smith, his third. And now we start to move up to that free throw line. Kellep takes it on in. Good job by Smith all the way. Tried to get a block out there to Broderick, but no chance with Mills. And Smith picks up the foul going right after Terry Mills. At the free throw line, Michigan is 4 of 6. South Alabama, 18 of 25. This club led the nation in field goal shooting percentage, but they're not bad from the foul line either. They're shooting up there at six, almost 74 percent. Terry Mills at 79 percent. Very nice shooting touch, pulled off the line a little early. Puts them up by two. Down toward the seven-minute mark. Regulation here in Atlanta. down on the baseline in this double low stack. But he sneaks around under there, doesn't he? Doesn't he? And they have Hodge and Lewis in the stack. He couldn't get the handle. He yep. lost it as he came across, or he might have skied right there. That's Gary Kenner. Yeah, Colonel, I had game. to look as he slipped yep. in on us. Michigan yanks a rebound away. They lead at 74-72. See what Ronnie Arrow is trying to do. He wants his two super guards rested to go down the stretch last four minutes or so. Big turnover. That's 13 turnovers on Michigan. Seton Hall leading Evansville in the second half. And Miss 
Missouri holding on to that lead for Texas. They could be headed for a showdown with Syracuse if Syracuse could beat Colorado State. Time remaining in the game. Rebounding here today, and this is going to shock you. South Alabama has out-rebounded Michigan 30-28. to 28. Smaller, and they work away. Estaba goes to the glass. They're efficient, this team. They've tied it at 74. He's got that shot down to a science. Pulls it back over his right ear. Hard to block. This must be fun for folks in Mobile to follow this team. Billy, this is an interesting basketball team. Must be fun for people in Caracas, Venezuela, watching this kid play. They watching us today? Are we down there? Is that our region? <laughs> Foul call against uh, South Alabama. That's Turner. Now, here's Estaba. He came to the United States, played at a junior college for six games out in California, said he was broke and didn't have enough money to go home, said the coach out there kept the money from him that he had promised him for transportation, and as a result of playing those six, that has jeopardized any future career he might have in the NCAA because that counts against him out there. Then he has subsequently come to South Alabama. He's married. He has a young child, and young child was in attendance at her first round game against Alabama. The baby was very excited, 18-month-old girl. And in talking to Joe Godfrey, the athletic director of South Alabama, they are going to appeal to the NCAA to show some compassion for the young man who got stuck in that situation. We'll see what happens in that one. And Billy Packer said if he scores 26 and has 12 rebounds, <laughs> you got no chance. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Joe was looking for some sympathy. I just told him the best way to get sympathy is to lose his ball game. He, he didn't want to sacrifice yeah. that, did he? $250,000 worth of sympathy. Thanks, but no thanks. That'll buy a lot of hallmarks, kid. Lamiel Robinson checks in now with the four fouls. Let me set the situation here. We got 556. 76-74. Michigan with the Big Ten. The Big Ten unbeaten so far in this tournament. Right, a little better matchup now with Ramil Mark Robinson coming back in, so he and Caleb can match up with the guards. It's Glenn Rice out here on Lewis. They really haven't been able to get Hodge free as much as I anticipated here in this ballgame. Stabba. Powering his way for that jump. Couldn't get the roll, but it's tapped up by Mr. Lewis. And he had Rice with him. He's given up three inches minimum. Well, like, what's the thing you need if you've got peanut butter and jelly? What's that third ingredient you well, got to have? You know what you got to have? Yeah, that's bread. a stopper, man. <laughs> He's the bread on his team, okay? you got to have that horse. Here. Well, you know, just by getting three for that shot, it allowed Lewis to get the inside position. Rice. What a touch off the glass. You know, he shoots it almost like the ball has lost its air. It just floats down in there. It? Yeah, it's real feathery. It's been a great career at Michigan. Straight man to man, and South Alabama staying with that double O stack. Patient half court. They punch it to Lewis. Nice idea to pass. get it back. Dodge on the jump shot. Bangs it in inside of 10 on that shot clock. You know, I like when Hodge is out on the top for South Alabama. He's much tougher to defend out there. And you don't get any help if you're Ramil Robinson. They're headed right down for a buzzer beat. Get ready to welcome all those other audiences, Coach Pat. They've been coming in for this one. Mills can shoot that jumper out there. Robinson is firing outside. South Alabama's ball. 78 all. Were we going to have a Cinderella at the regional ball? Well, we might have, folks. Hang on. Let's see. Fred, the other thing that's helping South Alabama right here is the fact that the tempo, Michigan not coming out and playing them any defense. Therefore, South Alabama's big guys get a chance to rest. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been impressive. And over to Hodge, and Hodge up over the top. Michigan ball. And we're going to have a television break. We'll come back for the last three and a half minutes of regulation. Who knows how long we might play on this one. Uh, Southeast region, second round, South Alabama and Michigan are tied at 78. And the NCAA committee man who was at this site enjoying the action is a long-time basketball man. That is Freddie Schaus, the athletic director from West Virginia. One-time coach, he took the Mountaineers into a Final Four. Next to him, the most important man in the arena, head of the officials.
That's Mr. Henry Nichols over there. Well, we saw uh, Fred Chow still holds an NCAA record. His first six years at West Virginia took a team to the NCAA tournament. So a record that, that still stands up to this point. Joey Meyer breathing down his neck with five. This is Ramil Robinson. Speaking of breathing down someone's neck, South Alabama has been breathing away at the Wolverines. Michigan took an 11-point lead in the first half. Getting some good screening inside for Rice and Mills. There's Rice. Oh, he's such a great shooter. That is 33 points for Glenn Rice. Now it's South Alabama's turn. Caleb staying out on Hodge. I just have a feeling Hodge is going to break loose for a three. Lewis. Hodge. Here's Lewis. They can't get it to him. They almost lost it. Get it back. Brodnick off a fake. Gives it up to Estaba. Mills tried to get, you know, all, all is fair in love and war, but if you're Brodrick at 5'7 and you're Mills at 6'10, the referees don't look at the charts the same way, I guess. Now it's Robinson and Michigan's turn. Two bodies go flying. No advantage game. Mills swings into the paint. And the foul is called, scored, and put him on the line. It's against Smith. That is his fourth personal foul. Terry Mills showing great post-up play right here. This young man's got a lot of ability. Moves to the left, glides nicely. He's got a good touch. Takes that big 6'10 body in there. Michigan building a two. Uh, the most pressure in this game, clearly, is on Steve Fishman. And he is... Handling himself calmly over there. I've been watching him as much as I can, consulting the other assistants. He's the interim coach, replaced Breeder. The only chance he's got is to keep driving this team on in the tournament. They're up by three right now. They're up against a very well-coached team from the Sun Belt. Estaba, a workman coming up, muscling his way in with that shot. Griffith, good defense on the inside. Great play. So it's going to go over. And now Ronnie Arrow's going to call a timeout here right away on this situation. So the foul situation will be critical the last two minutes. Field goal didn't count, and clearly it's a good call. Watch Estaba go up in the air, come down, still got it. That's why he was able to muscle it up and in. Well, they carried it right along with him. So the ball goes to Michigan on the turnover. They lead it by three. We're down to the two-minute mark, 83-80 right now. Rice has led the way with 33 points. He's been the Michigan MVP, no doubt about that. Lewis leading the way for the Jaguars. Now they go into a trap. Yep, change of defense right here. Roderick running in the center. He's smart to pull it back out and recognize. He's Rodnick lost down there in, in behind Mills. Got Michigan confused here as to what this defense is all about. But you get it to this man. Oh. <laughs> hey, Bo says that's better. That's better than that last second field goal. Oh, uh, Gillette just hit a 43 yarder for me. It'll be Lewis. Too hard. Off. One by Michigan, off the glass. Rice came away with it. Game's biggest basket, and now the number one rebound. Michigan leading it by six, a minute to go in Atlanta. And Steve Fisher may take the Wolverines on in the Southeastern Regional. If they can shoot some free throws. Remember, the South Alabama team, extremely dangerous from the three. Well, we'd like to welcome you to Atlanta. That is Steve Fisher, the interim coach, who'd like to become the permanent coach at Michigan. And he is just 55 seconds away from leading Michigan on to the regional semifinal in Lexington, Kentucky. This is Caleb at the free throw line. Now, that will show you some of the numbers we've had. The most important thing that Michigan had to overcome was serious foul trouble in the first half of this game. And South Alabama overcame an 11-point deficit in the first half to carve out a lead. Their biggest lead in this game was six. And now Michigan leading it by seven. And the Jaguars leading the three. Brodnick misses. Asaba comes back for the two. 
And Lewis missing on the inside rebound from Michigan. And Estaba has assessed his third personal foul. Boy, Mills went heavily to the floor that time, shaking it off and, and coming back down. And Errol will use a timeout for the Jaguars. So it's Michigan's game to lose right now. They're up by 7, 38 seconds to go. He was with Steve when he was a basketball coach at Rich East High School back in Park Forest, Illinois during the 70s. Moved on to Western Michigan. Bill Frieder hired him. Now he could be taking the Wolverines on to the regional in Lexington. And if they get to the region, Bo, take the band, okay? No more hiring a band, all right? This is not a dance. <laughs> Fred, I'll tell you one thing that they can be very thankful of. In recruiting of Glenn Rice, who was about the seventh guy in line of who they wanted, they wanted the likes of Roy Marble, Ricky Calloway, Lowell Hamilton, Melvin McCants. Ended up with Glenn Rice. They can be sure. <laughs> Talk about uh, the last will be first. Oh, Frank Ricky says lucky is clearly the residue of skill. Yeah, uh, he never coached basketball either. He's been 80 a great seconds. Okay, 80. 36 seconds remaining here. Uh, Iowa and North Carolina State were tied last check. We'll get an update on that with New York. You'll be headed in there to see some of that, I'm sure. Staba going in. A field goal and another quick timeout is called by Ronnie. Now, this is a dangerous time. Team, you never want to count the Jaguars out. Just ask Alabama. That was the last timeout for South Alabama. Glenn Rice of Flint, Michigan, with 36 points today. His season high for the Wolverines is 38. His career high, 40. They lead it by 7, 26 seconds to go. Run the baseline and he fell out of the lost it. And yep. it goes over. Brett, they were down 9, 89, 80 uh, with South Alabama. And, uh, you know, that, the mathematics problem, that's nine points, three threes. They went for the quick two. They have no timeouts left. So from a position, possession standpoint, seven down, they still need three possessions. Now, Michigan will use a timeout, so that gives South Alabama a break here. At least they can regroup, but they've got to fire a three quickly. Yeah, you've got three possessions. You might as well take the three in the first one. The two really doesn't help you. Ronnie Arrow without any timeouts. Michigan still has two left. You know, I was talking to Bo about uh, the decision he made to put Steve Fisher in charge when it was learned that Bill Frieder had moved on to Arizona State. I said, Bo, I... Did it take you a while? I said, did you agonize over that decision? It took me five seconds. Might have taken him five seconds, but let me tell you something, Brent, that I think about this. Nobody at Michigan has a contract. Bill Frieder is on a one-year basis along with everybody else up there. And if you're a coach getting up in some years, you got people nipping at your heels all the time saying you can't win the big one, you've got an opportunity to get a contract with some stability. Uh, you know, you really, you really have to think about a, a man making a decision in that regard. Now, what Bo Schembechler does is his own business, but it would seem in this day and age, maybe time yes. for a contract, yes. the way coaches are getting flipped yes. around in the country. Yes. 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 Talk about how well Michigan has shot. Look at all time season field goal percentage. It's Michigan, up. better than 57%. Now, last year they went to the regional in Seattle and they were knocked off by North Carolina. They might have a rematch up there because if they can hold on here, they will play the winner of the North Carolina UCLA game. Billy, as we look ahead to that second game, uh, how much does North Carolina drop off without the suspended J.R. Reed? Well, it's a long time ago, but they played UCLA and buried him early on in the year. J.R.'s first game back off his injury. Uh, this North Carolina team, very talented in the front court. I think they can probably afford to miss somebody in the front court, but their back court uh, does not have that type of depth. There's the three. Lewis had it rimmed out. Get it back out. Stabba. He didn't take it out, fired it two. Now, Rodnick stepped inside the three-point line. That one was good. They're just bringing seconds down off the clock. Exactly. They had a hard job here, and you know, it's just a matter. I realize you've got a better shot inside, but you've got to fire the ball back out and try the three. Mathematics working against you. You have no more timeouts. As a matter of fact, mathematically, it's impossible now for them to... Uh, to go ahead. Michigan doesn't have to take the ball out on a made basket. He cannot win the game at this point. 
So with nine seconds, Caleb will step up for the free throw. Now, there are going to be some long faces over there for South Alabama, but really, this uh, this team should walk out of here with its uh, heads held high. You can see they're very disappointed, obviously, about losing this game to Michigan here this afternoon. But what a marvelous... Uh, what a marvelous story they gave everybody a couple of days ago when they beat uh, Alabama. And her husband, Coach Ronnie Arrow, has done a great job with this South Alabama team. And you know, Brent, in fairness to South Alabama, they played their championship on a Monday night. It would be actually two weeks tomorrow would be two weeks from the time they had played their last game. So they went a long time with, you know, being up at a peak, playing a great game against Jacksonville, trying to hold together for that many days of practice. If he knows the junior college school, which obviously does get coached there, he's got to get himself a new jar of peanut butter and jelly, but we know where they are. That's right. Coached three national champions. Won 71 straight at one point. Meanwhile, for Michigan, Big Ten going to stay unbeaten so far in this NCAA tournament. And the Wolverines move along to the regional semifinal in Lexington, Kentucky. to 82. Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. Michigan will take on the winner. You